everyone this is the second video in part three of our um, Excel tips uh, how to how to create a data table um, in the first video which was part two we showed you how to do a two variable data table which is right here and this is basically the same exact um, template as as was used in part two except I changed the title a bit so um, as it says up here the goal is to show you how to um, show more than one return metric within this table um, when you're using a two variable uh, data table. So all the results in the data table um, are governed obviously by the top row and the far left hand column and the return metric that you see is is based on um, what we put in cell F23 which in this case is the IRR. And if you're just joining us if you're just joining into this video and you have not seen part two and you're unfamiliar with with the two variable data tables you can just click on the link here and you can go back and watch that first um, and also what I didn't mention is that if you click on the link in the description you can download this template and uh, follow along with everything that we're doing here so let's move on and let's let's dive into how we actually go about showing um, more than one return metric within the data table all right, so as I mentioned previously, um, these cells within the data table are showing you different IRRs because the IRR is what we link to um, in the cell in the top left corner of the data table. So let's move forward and let's actually add a second return metric into this cell. So everything that you're going to want to manipulate here is everything happens within cell F23 in this template. All right, so let's go ahead and partially format this and let's add the the equity multiple so in order to add additional text or an additional cell and have the the actual cell show you the result you always need to add an ampersand and then for example since we're going to show two return metrics let's put in quotations and a back and a uh, I'm sorry quotations and within the quotations a backslash We'll add another ampersand and let's link to the equity multiple and let's hit enter. All right. So as we see, this is not quite right. It's it's returning what we're looking for. I mean, here we have, you know, if we had a one million dollar purchase price and we exit year one, we'd have an 80 percent IRR and a 1.8 X equity multiple. So as you can see here, but you know our formatting's not quite right. This is all messy. So you need to format this. So the way you go about doing this is using the the text formula. So for example, we have our IRR and we're showing a decimal point, and we have one. We have the percent sign after uh, one uh, zero after the decimal point. So we have text. We do a comma. And then in quotations, we do the format we want to see. So we want to see, uh, let's see, we want to see two numbers, period, another number. And the reason I'm putting in zero here rather than a number is because if you put in a number and this number happens to be zero, the output will be blank. However, if you put in a zero, and the number happens to be not zero, it will show the number. But if it is zero, it will always show a zero. So actually, let's put a let's put the uh, pound sign in, and, and I'll show you how this works. I'll show you what happens when you do, and we'll go back and we'll change it. All right, so let's add the percent sign in here. So that's the proper format for our IRR, and let's now format our equity multiple so we have the reference cell and let's format it so we're gonna do this one we'll do properly so we'll do number a period or decimal point number oop, and then zero and quotes and if I didn't oh let's actually add an X within the quotes after the zero and there we go and that is how you uh, format everything. And so what I also wanted to show you previously is that as you see in this cell, cell G24, 
we have an 80% IRR, but we wanted to show it with um, the zero, not a blank space. And the reason it's not showing the zero is because we have the pound sign here. So if we change that to a zero, it'll show up. And you see that we have the zero, and it doesn't impact any of the other numbers. So the zero also means number. So basically, when you put in a zero, it says show a number including zero. If you put in the pound sign, it means show the number. If it's zero, leave it blank. And so that's really it. There's a simple uh, explanation for how to do a, a two-variable data table and to display more than one return metric within the table. Hope that's helpful and hope you can use this going forward. Thanks. Bye.